This is one of Japan's most famous inventions, the bullet train. Picture a train gliding through a tunnel at 500 kilometers per hour, floating silently above its track with nothing but magnetic fields holding it in the air. No wheels, no friction, just pure levitation. Japan has been building this reality for years, and the infrastructure behind it is almost complete. The only question left is whether the timeline can hold. So what exactly makes a train capable of defying contact with the ground? What makes a train float? The principle behind magnetic levitation isn't magic, but it does involve some physics that feel close to it. In Japan's superconducting maglev system, the train doesn't rely on wheels once it reaches a certain speed. Instead, superconducting magnets mounted along the sides of the train interact with coils embedded in the guideway. These magnets are cooled to extremely low temperatures using liquid helium, which allows them to conduct electricity without resistance. When the train moves, the interaction between these superconducting magnets and the guideway coils generates powerful magnetic forces. These forces push the train upward and keep it suspended several centimeters above the track. The faster the train moves, the stronger and more stable the levitation becomes. At cruising speed, there's no physical contact between the train and the guideway. Friction, the force that wears down conventional rail systems and limits their speed, is almost entirely removed. This allows the train to reach velocities that would destroy a wheeled vehicle. The system is passive in the sense that once the train is moving fast enough, levitation happens automatically. There's no need for constant adjustment or power input to stay afloat. It's a self-regulating process driven by the physics of superconductivity and magnetic repulsion. The $64 billion question. Building a train that floats is one thing. Building hundreds of kilometers of infrastructure to support it is another challenge entirely. The total cost of the Chuo Shinkansen project has now reached approximately $64 billion, and that figure continues to climb as construction progresses. This isn't just about laying track. The majority of the route runs underground, requiring extensive tunneling through some of Japan's most geologically complex terrain. Deep beneath cities, rivers, and mountain ranges, boring machines work around the clock to carve out massive tunnels wide enough to accommodate the guideway and all its supporting systems. Land acquisition in densely populated Japan is expensive and politically sensitive, so tunneling became the preferred solution. But tunneling at this scale isn't cheap. Each kilometer of tunnel costs tens of millions of dollars, and the total length of the Tokyo to Nagoya segment alone stretches over 280 kilometers. Add to that the cost of stations, ventilation systems, emergency exits, power infrastructure, and the superconducting technology itself, and the price tag starts to make sense. Critics have questioned whether the investment is justified, especially given Japan's aging population and existing high-speed rail network. But supporters argue that the Chuo Shinkansen isn't just about speed, it's about redundancy, resilience, and future-proofing Japan's transport backbone. The existing Tokaido Shinkansen, which connects Tokyo and Osaka, is nearing capacity and is vulnerable to earthquakes. A second corridor, built to higher standards and using newer technology, provides insurance against disasters and creates long-term economic value. Drilling through mountains Tunnel construction is the single most complex and time-consuming part of the entire project. The route passes through the Japanese Alps, one of the most seismically active and geologically unstable regions in the country. Engineers are using tunnel boring machines that can handle a range of rock types, from soft sediment to hard granite. But the process is slow. These machines advance only a few meters per day in difficult conditions. The tunnels must be reinforced continuously to prevent collapse, and groundwater poses a constant challenge. In some areas, workers have encountered underground rivers and aquifers that require careful drainage and waterproofing. The Southern Alps Tunnel, one of the longest sections, stretches for over 25 kilometers beneath mountains that reach elevations of 3,000 meters. Boring through this terrain requires precision engineering and constant monitoring. Any miscalculation could lead to structural failure or dangerous ground shifts. Environmental concerns have also arisen, particularly around water diversion and its impact on local ecosystems. 
Construction has been paused or delayed in certain areas to address these issues. The tunnels are designed not just for the train itself, but for safety and ventilation. Emergency exits are spaced at regular intervals, and large shafts provide airflow to prevent pressure buildup when trains enter and exit at high speed. The scale of this underground network is staggering, and it represents some of the most advanced tunneling work ever undertaken. Why 86? Percent of the route is underground. The decision to place most of the route underground wasn't arbitrary. Japan is a densely populated island nation with limited open land, especially in the corridors between its largest cities. Running a high-speed maglev line through urban areas or across private farmland would require massive land acquisition, lengthy legal battles, and significant public opposition. Going underground solves several problems at once. It minimizes disruption to existing communities, avoids the need for elevated structures that would dominate the landscape, provides natural protection from weather and seismic activity. Tunnels also reduce noise pollution. At 500 kilometers per hour, a maglev train generates significant aerodynamic noise. Underground operation confines that noise and prevents it from affecting residential areas. From an engineering perspective, tunnels offer greater control over the environment. Temperature, humidity, and wind are all eliminated as variables, which improves system reliability and reduces maintenance. The guideway itself is protected from the elements, extending its lifespan and reducing the frequency of inspections. Seismic isolation is another advantage. Deep tunnels can be designed to flex and absorb ground motion during earthquakes, reducing the risk of catastrophic damage. Japan's experience with earthquake engineering has been incorporated into every aspect of the tunnel design. The superconducting magnets. At the heart of the maglev system are the superconducting magnets, and they're unlike anything used in conventional rail transport. These magnets are mounted in containers along the sides of the train and cooled to around minus 269 degrees Celsius using liquid helium. At this temperature, certain materials lose all electrical resistance and become superconductors. This allows them to carry enormous currents and generate extremely powerful magnetic fields without consuming continuous energy. The magnets interact with coils installed along the guideway walls. As the train moves, the changing magnetic field induces currents in these coils, which in turn create their own magnetic fields. These fields repel the superconducting magnets on the train, lifting it off the guideway. The same interaction provides propulsion. By controlling the timing and strength of the currents in the guideway coils, the system can push the train forward or slow it down. There are no engines on the train itself. All the propulsion force comes from the guideway. This makes the train lighter and mechanically simpler. Maintaining superconductivity requires constant cooling, so each train carries onboard helium refrigeration systems. These systems are highly reliable, but they add complexity and cost. The magnets themselves are incredibly strong. If you were standing near one when it was active, you'd feel the pull from several meters away. That strength is necessary to lift a fully loaded train weighing hundreds of tons and keep it stable at high speed. Building stations for 500 km per hour trains. Stations for a maglev system aren't just larger versions of regular train platforms. They're engineered environments designed to handle extreme speeds, high passenger volumes, and complex safety requirements. Most of the stations on the Chuo Shinkansen Sin are located deep underground, some as far as 40 meters below street level. This keeps them out of the way of existing infrastructure and allows the route to pass directly beneath city centers. Access involves escalators, elevators, and long corridors, similar to a metro system, but on a much larger scale. When a train traveling at 500 kilometers per hour enters a tunnel, it creates a pressure wave. If not managed, this wave can cause discomfort for passengers, structural stress, and noise. Stations are designed with pressure relief systems, including large ventilation shafts and gradual entry tunnels that dissipate the pressure wave before the train comes to a stop. Emergency systems are extensive. Because the trains and stations are underground, evacuation routes must be clearly marked and easily accessible. Fire suppression, air filtration, and backup power systems are all built into the design. Platforms are sealed and climate controlled to prevent drafts and pressure changes from affecting passengers. Doors align precisely with the train and boarding is fast and efficient. The 2026 Timeline Reality Check. 
The year 2026 has been mentioned repeatedly as a potential milestone for the Chuo Shinkansen, but it's important to understand what that milestone actually represents. This isn't a grand opening with full commercial service from day one. Instead, 2026 is seen as a target for completing major construction phases and beginning extended testing with limited passenger operations. The Tokyo to Nagoya segment is the focus of this initial phase. If the timeline holds, the core tunneling, guideway installation, and station construction should be finished by then. What follows is months, possibly years, of systems integration, safety testing, and reliability verification. Japan doesn't rush infrastructure projects, especially ones involving new technology at this scale. The country's rail operators have a reputation for near-perfect safety records, and they're not going to compromise that for the sake of meeting a deadline. Any delays in construction, unexpected geological challenges, or issues with the superconducting systems could push the timeline further. What this means for Tokyo to Osaka the ultimate goal of the Chuo Shinkansen is to connect Tokyo and Osaka, Japan's two largest metropolitan areas, in about one hour. Currently, the journey takes around two and a half hours on the Tokaido Shinkansen. That's already fast, but the maglev would cut travel time by more than half. This has major implications for how people live and work. A one-hour commute between Tokyo and Osaka becomes feasible for business travelers, opening up new economic opportunities and reducing the need for overnight stays. Conferences, meetings, and collaborations that once required significant travel time could become same-day affairs. The Tokido Shinkansen is one of the busiest rail corridors in the world, carrying hundreds of millions of passengers each year. It's nearing capacity, and there's little room to add more trains without sacrificing reliability. The Chuo Shinkansen provides a parallel route that takes pressure off the existing line and offers redundancy in case of natural disasters. If an earthquake damages the Tokaido line, the maglev could keep the corridor connected. Regional cities along the road also stand to benefit. Nagoya, already a major industrial hub, would become even more accessible. Smaller cities could see increased investment in population growth as they become viable commuting options for people working in Tokyo or Osaka. Safety at extreme speed. Traveling at 500 kilometers per hour inside a tunnel raises obvious safety questions. Japan's engineers have spent decades addressing them. The maglev system includes multiple layers of redundancy. If the levitation system fails, the train has retractable landing gear that extends to provide a controlled descent onto emergency rails. Braking systems are diverse and independent. Magnetic brakes, aerodynamic brakes, and mechanical brakes can all be activated separately or in combination. Even if one system fails, others can bring the train to a stop safely. Earthquake detection is integrated into the guideway, sensors monitor ground motion in real time, and if seismic activity is detected, trains are automatically slowed or stopped before the shaking reaches dangerous levels. This system has been proven effective on Japan's conventional Shinkansen, and it's being enhanced for the maglev. Fire safety is another priority. The trains are built with flame-retardant materials, and the stations are equipped with sprinklers, smoke extraction systems, and clearly marked evacuation routes. Because the route is mostly underground, ventilation is carefully managed to prevent smoke from spreading. Communication systems ensure that passengers and crew are always in contact with control centers, and backup power ensures that critical systems remain operational even during outages. The Economics of Levitation Operating a maglev system is expensive, but so is building and maintaining conventional high-speed rail. The key difference is where the costs are concentrated. Maglev trains have fewer moving parts than wheeled trains. There's no wheel wear, no rail grinding, and no ballast maintenance. This reduces long-term maintenance costs, though it's offset by the complexity of the superconducting systems and the need for cryogenic cooling. Energy consumption is significant. Levitating and propelling a train at 500 km per hour requires substantial electrical power. However, the system is designed to be efficient at cruising speed, and regenerative braking recovers some energy when the train slows down. Ticket prices are expected to be higher than conventional Shinkansen fares, at least initially. The goal is to position the maglev as a premium service for travelers who value speed and convenience. Over time, as ridership increases and operational efficiencies improve, prices may come down. The economic case for the project rests on long-term benefits. 
Faster travel times increase productivity, reduce reliance on domestic flights, and create new economic opportunities. The technology itself could become an export, with other countries looking to Japan for expertise in building their own maglev systems. The levitating bullet train isn't just a faster way to get from Tokyo to Osaka. It's a test of whether the future of transportation can be built today with all the complexity, cost, and ambition that entails. If it works, it changes everything.